The real meaning of E is equal to MC square and the explanation is given by your own physics voila. Do you think mass is really converted to energy? I'm so sorry, all you have been thinking is damn wrong. In his original 1905 paper, Einstein never wrote E is equal to mc square. Instead, he mentioned m is equal to E by c square. Suppose we have two identical boxes A and B made up of same components x, y and z. Will they have same mass? No. Shocking. Actually, the mass of anything depends upon first its components, second how the components are arranged, third how are the components interacting with one another. Now let's get started with another example. Suppose we have two identical clocks. The first one is stop and the second one is moving or ticking. Now the clock on the right is stop and the clock on your left is moving or ticking. The question here really is, will both have same mass? And the answer is no shocking. A moving or a ticking clock has a greater mass than a stop clock. Oops, are you confused? Okay, here I go. Are you ready? A moving or a ticking clock has kinetic energy due to ticking. It also has heat energy due to friction between clock's hand and wall of clock. So, a moving clock has some extra energy than a stop clock. The extra energy of the moving clock is due to the kinetic energy and due to the heat energy. This extra energy manifests itself as extra mass. Oops. So what's that Einstein's equation where m extra is equal to e extra divided by c square? So if that's true, why we don't feel this mass? Probably because in m is equal to e over c square, the c is so large, it's the speed of light that M becomes so small that it can't be filled. But remember, it's not zero. Okay, let's take another analogy. Suppose I have a torch with a battery in the middle shown by yellow dots. The torch is glowing due to electrochemical energy stored in its battery being converted to light energy. Let's see how it happens. As the torch glows, the battery starts decaying and the electrochemical energy starts depleting and changing into light. The torch must become a little lightweight as it loses mass in form of electrochemical energy. So am I saying mass is nothing but energy? Patience grasshoppers, let's have another analogy. The sun loses 400 crores kilograms per second to produce heat and light energy. Don't worry, that's just 0.07% of sun's total mass. Wait a second, so I'm saying mass converts to energy? No, that's an alchemy. This energy comes from the potential energy that sun's molecules have due to their interactions with one another and from the kinetic energy that the molecules have and also from the vibrational energy that they possess. Listen carefully, almost 99% of mass of anything comes from various kinds of energy it possesses. Remember, 99% mass. Now, everything is made up of atoms. An atom is made up of electrons, protons and neutrons. Protons and neutrons are made up of particles called quarks and antiquarks. So from where does the mass of protons and neutrons come? It does not come from the actual mass. It comes from energy. The quarks have potential energy due to interactions among them and kinetic energy due to their jingling a little bit. Now, as you can imagine, the separation between the particles at this level is very, very, very small and hence the Coulomb force which acts between particles which is proportional to the square of separation is very, very large as the separation is small and hence the energy is too, too large. So now, m is equal to e over c square, the mass is not very small as energy is also very large which comprehends the c square and thus we say mass comes from energy only. There is no mass and hence we should follow m is equal to e over c square. Created using Paltoon.